Hi everyone, so I've just filmed a video doing my top 5 records of 2015 and I thought whilst I'm here I may as well just do my top 5 TV shows of 2015 because I just really enjoy TV. So the first show that I would really recommend watching from 2015 was a show called Younger. So I'm going to read the synopsis out to you. It says, Younger follows 40-year-old Liza, a suddenly single mother who tries to get back into the working world, only to find out it's near impossible to start at the bottom at her age. When a chance encounter with a 20-something-year-old guy at a bar convinces her she looks younger than she is, she tries to pass herself off as 26 with the help of a makeover, courtesy of her best friend Maggie. Armed with new confidence, she lands a job as an assistant to the temperamental Diana and teams up with her new co-worker and fellow 20-something-year-old Kelsey to make it in the career of her dreams. So, I'm not gonna lie, that synopsis makes it sound a bit crap, but it is really good. It's very easy to watch. Like, don't watch it if you want a complex, like, stimulating show. It's not. It's just very easy to watch. It's funny, it's enjoyable, it's fun. It's like a feel-good sitcom kind of thing and it's got Hilary Duff in it and she's just great in it honestly so yeah if you like Hilary Duff or even if you like Sutton Foster just watch it it is definitely I would say more one for the girls than the boys but boys could probably enjoy it too I suppose but definitely just a girly feel good one the next show that I'd recommend from 2015 is Master of None so this one is like the most, the smallest synopsis ever. It just says, the personal and professional life of Dev, a 30 year old actor in New York. And realistically, yeah, that is, that is all it is. So this show is a bit of a cheat being on this list because I actually watched it in 2016, but it came out in 2015 and I binge watched it in a day. So I don't think it counts, but the fact that I binge watched it in a day should tell you that it is very good. It's very, it's one of those shows I feel like you need to have a certain kind of humor to enjoy it, but if you like the kind of humour on like Parks and Rec, if you liked Aziz and Sorry and that, I think you should like this. It's a little bit more, a bit more dry, a bit more sarcastic, but it's definitely a very good one. Third show that I'm going to recommend from 2015 is a show called I Zombie, and I can't believe this actually came out in 2015 because I remember thinking for ages, oh, I should probably watch that. I quite want to watch that, and then I got around to watching it. I think in like summer. And there was probably only like seven episodes or something, but I just, for some reason, I thought that came out in like 2013, 2014, but besides the point, it didn't. It came out in 2015, and the synopsis for that one is... Seattle medical resident Olivia Livmore is turned into a zombie while attending a boat party. To cope with her new appetite for brains, Liv takes a job at the King County Morgue and shares her secret with her boss, Dr. Ravi. In order for Liv to survive, Ravi encourages her to eat the brains of murder victims whose bodies are delivered to the morgue. Whenever she eats a victim's brain, Liv temporarily inherits some of their personality traits. She also experiences flashbacks which often give her clues as to the nature of her murder and then she uses this to help the Seattle Police Department solve crimes, kind of passing herself off as a psychic consultant. It is really good. I've heard if you like Veronica Mars, you should like this. I've never seen Veronica Mars, so, but that's what I've read on a lot of reviews and stuff when I wasn't sure if I was going to watch it. It is good. It is a little bit on the girlier side. I just really enjoyed it. I find it's one of those shows where you can binge watch it and you do get invested in the characters and it's just quite interesting and I'm really not the kind of person who is into supernatural type of shows or especially like zombie shows. That's just never appealed to me. But for some reason, I really like this. I think it is just because it's kind of got that girly edge to it. I'm quite, my taste in TV isn't that good, but I enjoy it. And the, I don't know, I think it's Rose, I forget, but the Rose McIver, McI oh, I don't know, the lady, lady actress that plays Liv, um, I watched an interview with her and she's actually like Australian and she's she puts all the makeup on and her hair is like done and you just wouldn't even know it was her so I think she's definitely an incredible actress. The second show on my list is Scream Queens so the synopsis for this is the first season focuses on the Kappa Kappa Tau sorority at Wallace University led by Chanel Oberlin that is threatened by Dean Kathy Munch events Reignite a 20 year old murder mystery with the re-emergence of the serial killer dressed as the Red Devil mascot who begins targeting the sorority members. So mm, that kind of explains it, but it kind of doesn't. I will say Scream Queens, it's not good, it's bad, but it's bad in a way that makes it really good. Like it's very, 
I don't know if that makes sense. It's kind of car crash TV, but it's done in the sense that it's supposed to be. So if, if you kind of have that level of thinking, you'll really enjoy it. But if you go into it thinking, this is going to be amazing, this is going to be like American Horror Story, it's not. It's really not, but it is good. It's kind of like American Horror Story meets like Mean Girls. To be fair, I just adore Emma Roberts. I know she, for some reason people are quite divided on her, but I just love like everything she does. I think she's just a brilliant actress. And Scream Queens was no exception. The only thing I would say with Scream Queens is their marketing, they really focused on Ariana Grande being in it for some reason. She was like a big part of it and she's not she's not really in it, so I wouldn't watch it if you just want to see Ariana Grande in something because no. But if you just want to watch like a really kind of shallow pop culture type thing, then go for that one. The number one on my list from 2015 is Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, and this is another one. I feel like this came out forever ago. I don't feel like this should have been out in 2015, but it was, and Tina Fey is one of the writers of it, and I think Tina Fey can like do no wrong. She's just amazing. Like Mean Girls 30 Rock, this just some of my favourite things ever. So it says, this series follows 29 year old Kimmy Schmidt as she adjusts to life in New York City after her rescue from a doomsday cult in Indiana where she and three other women were held by Reverend Richard Wayne Gary Wayne for 15 years. Determined to be seen as something other than a victim and armed with only a positive attitude, Kimmy decides to restart her life by moving to New York City where she quickly befriends her streetwise landlady Lillian, finds a roommate in the struggling actor Titus and gains a job as a nanny for the melancholy and out of touch socialite Jacqueline. With their help, Kimmy struggles to adapt to an unfamiliar world and jumpstart the adult life that had been taken away from her. So yeah, that's essentially it. That's quite a good synopsis. I think for me personally, it wasn't even the plot that made this good. I think there's just so many pop culture references throughout and some of the writing, it's so clever, but it's just so subtle in that if you didn't know what it was referring to, you wouldn't get it and they don't explain it to you. So I feel like maybe if you, if you weren't into pop culture or current events and you watched it, you probably think, oh, this is like average at best. And th there are some things that go over my head. Like I remember I watched it and then I watched it again with just some different people and they started laughing at stuff that I didn't even realize was really a joke because it was like about sports and stuff and I know nothing about sports. So I just think that goes to show there's just so many little jokes and layers in it that just appeal to so many different people. And I do think it's just such a feel good one as well. It's really easy to watch. I think I watched that in two days, I think. so. I did binge on that one pretty hard. So yeah, those were my five favourite TV shows of 2015 and I just really enjoyed all of them. I would recommend all of them. For the most part, I would say these are quite girly TV shows. Obviously, I'm a girl, I have a girly taste in things. But if you are a boy watching this, I would definitely recommend Master of None, probably first, because that's just great and that's not very gender specific so I think you definitely enjoy that one and I would also recommend Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt because that's just like that appeals to everyone. The other three maybe a little bit girly probably scream queens out of those if you're gonna watch one but yeah just I just recommend all of them I love all of them so yeah okay bye